Hey everybody, Mr. Piano Tech here, and today I'm going to show you how to tune a piano. So today I'm going to be showing you my techniques for tuning a piano. I found these techniques to be the simplest and most accurate, allowing me to tune a piano in the least amount of time as perfectly as possible. So who is this video for? This video is geared more towards technicians, maybe either starting out, looking for maybe a new way to tune, some newer techniques, or somebody preparing for the RPT exam, and the occasional consumer who's just curious about the process. Now in this video I'm going to assume you already have a pretty good understanding of basic tuning concepts, like stability, tuning unisons, um, basic stuff. So I'm going to break the tuning down into four steps. Number one is the temperament. Number two is going to be the treble range of the piano. Number three will be the bass range of the piano. And number four will be your final checks. So without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, so step number one is temperament. So for the temperament, I highly recommend to use a computer or some sort of ETD or electronic tuning device. Personally, I use TuneLab. There's a lot of them out there in the market. I am going to do a separate video sometime on TuneLab and how I use it and how I have it set up. Now, I recommend only doing the temperament by ear if that's something you've done for a very long time and you feel very comfortable doing it. Also, if you're maybe preparing for the RPT exams, which is where you have to do it by ear for the temperament range. Uh, but save yourself some stress, save yourself some time and some trouble and some work. Uh, the temperament octave, which is the F3 to F4, these notes in here, this temperament is always going to be the same no matter what piano you're tuning. So whether you're tuning a little spinet or a concert grand piano, the temperament is not going to change. So some people may wonder if you're starting from F3 and you're going to F4 tuning that by a computer, then how do you know that A4 or A440 is going to be perfectly in tune? If you do the temperament using a computer program and you do the F3 to F4 and you'd set it right, when you go up to tune A4 off of A3, doing it with the techniques I'm going to show you, it will be perfectly in tune. So in the treble, we're going to use 4-2 octaves. So what that means is that the fourth partial of the first note is equal to the second partial of the higher note. So basically, starting from F3 to F4, tune your temperament using your program, whichever one you choose to use, and I'll show you how we start moving up the keyboard. Okay, so we've just finished tuning the temperament. Now we're gonna tune our first octave, which is F3 to F4, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So start by going sharp. Make sure you hear it go past where the, you can hear the tone get really fast. Bring it down. Get close, go ahead and do a stability hit. Okay, once you're confident you're really close, this is when you're gonna do your 4-2 interval check. So all we're gonna do is you're gonna take F3, we're gonna go down to C sharp, and this is gonna be a major third, okay? So if you're at F and you go down one, two, three, four notes, major third. So this is the interval that we're gonna to use to test to make sure that these are both in tune with each other. Okay, so we're gonna play these together. And you can hear that really fast wave. Now we're gonna compare that and we're gonna use that, that C sharp with F4. Okay, sounds very similar. So if you're off, let's say if we're a little too sharp, that's our test. You can hear much faster that one is going. You almost can't hear it, it's going so fast. So we know we're way too sharp. So let's say we went a little too far south. Again, that's our baseline. Hear how much slower that is. Okay, so if this one is slower than that one, we know we're too flat. So let's go back up. Okay, 
that sounds really good. Okay, so we're going to start working our way up. I would go ahead and tune the unisons as you go up. Um, sometimes if the piano, especially if it needs a pitch raise, and you do the center strings first and you come back and do the unisons, they will stretch at a different rate and it's more liable to go back out of tune a little quicker. Okay, so now we're going to go up to F sharp. Again, move it to where you can hear that you're going sharp. Bring it down. Okay, so before we were at C sharp, so we're going to move up one. Now we're in D. Okay, this one sounds a little faster, so that means we're still a little sharp. Sometimes if you get really close, you can just give it a good stability hit and it'll correct itself. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So again, just go to G, G sharp, work your way all the way up until you get to F5, and then we're gonna change things up a little bit. Okay, so we've made it all the way up to F5. So now what do we do? So now we don't have to do the interval checks anymore. You still can, it still helps sometimes, uh, but you can now just move on to a clean double octave. So that four two, again, the, the, the fourth partial, the first note that you're tuning is gonna be equal to the second partial, the next one you're tuning. So that's a perfect double octave. So now that we're up here, we can tune it this way. So you're still gonna do the same as you did before, do your basic octave. This will just get, get you into the ballpark. We wanna go sharp. Okay, that sounds pretty close. Now play our double octave. There's some movement in there. So you don't want movement in your double octave. That should be a clean octave. So if you want to, you could do the 4-2 check again if you're not real sure what side it's on, whether it's a little sharp, a little flat. Okay, so it's definitely a little sharp. So this is still useful until you get a little further up. Once you get a little too far up, you just can't hear it anymore and you'll have to be doing the double octaves. Okay, so we're gonna bring this down a little bit. That's pretty close. So if you're confident that you set this right, you're doing these checks. It sounds like that's where it should be, but you're hearing a little bit of, of a wavy tone in it. It's probably a false beat. Uh, that can occur in a single string and make it sound out of tune. When it's not, it's just the string itself. So that's the topic for another video. But just get that good, good and clean. And if you are working on a grand piano that has one, you can use the sostenuto pedal to hold that open for you if you just want to play with that, that double octave as you, go, as you go all the way up the keyboard. Okay, so again, let's review real quickly. When you do your first octaves, before you can get to the double octaves, you're gonna do your interval. Pretty straightforward, makes it really simple, makes it really easy to hear. You can never tune using just single octaves, it won't be correct. So just do that little, uh, the major third check, all the way up until you get to your double octave, then use the double octave and do it all the way up. I have people ask me, what is stretching the tuning? What is the, the octave stretching? So basically what that is, is that when you're in that last octave, the higher a pitch is, the more a human ear, it sounds flat. So sometimes you have to stretch that, that final octave a little bit further, make it a little wider for it to sound pleasing to the ear. Over the years um, has developed a stretch tuning and that's where that comes from. You're basically just gonna keep stretching that out a little bit. Uh, if you're taking your RPT exams, that actually has to be a 2-1 octave, which is a perfect single octave. They just like to check and make sure that you know how to do that perfectly. Okay, so moving on to the bass octave. I do want to know, however, that technically this um, temperament octave of F3 to F4 should be a combination of a good 4-2 octave and a 6-3, which is what we're moving into now. So how do you test for a 6-3 octave? So again, like I explained with a 4-2, a 6-3 is, is simply the sixth partial of the first note is gonna be equal to the third partial of the higher note. So if you get that partial perfectly in tune, you will have a perfect 6-3 octave. So the way we do that is we're actually gonna use um, first a minor third this time. So we're gonna go up a minor third. So let's say we've, we've done our F to F, we've tuned the, the treble side of the piano, we're ready to move down. Um, so we're gonna start with our E3, so we're gonna Use our E4. 
Again, tune a little sharp past it. Bring it down until you're sure it's pretty close. Okay, so on the 6-3 check, all we're going to do is move up a minor third. So we're going to do this. Okay, so a major third was four notes, so a minor is just one less. So you're going to take that note you're tuning and go one, two, three. That's it. Again, you can hear the waviness. This one sounds a little fast compared to this one, so we're probably still a little too sharp. Sounds pretty clean. And you'll get in the habit of just finding the notes automatically through muscle memory. So that is the first way to check the bass. There is another way that can get you perfect results and you never actually have to play an octave to hear it. So what that is is actually a ghost test. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull the 6-3 partial out of the octave. So if we go down here again to this E to E, so your 6-3 partial is actually, you're going to go a perfect fifth, and then up two octaves. So the perfect fifth is B. We're going to go up two more, okay? So hold your E's open and hit that B. You'll hear a tone get pulled out. So if you use that tone, you hear it get faster, the sharper you go. Slow it back down. So if you can get that to where it doesn't move at all, that, then you have a perfect 6-3 octave. This takes a lot of frustration out of tuning the bass. There's so much going on in the bass. If you try to tune off of your basic octave, um, even if you're trying to use double octaves, there's so much going on, it's really hard to hear. So this is actually a lot of the time what your tuning software is doing for you. It's not necessarily listening to the root note that you're tuning, it's listening to the partials higher up because it's easier to hear. So you're essentially just doing the same thing that your program would do for you if you wanted to tune using the ETD. But I highly recommend you do this by ear. It makes it sound a lot better. Um, once you start moving away from your temperament, each piano is a little bit different due to its scale, its inharmonicity, the length of the strings, everything. To review, I would tune the, the temperament octave by uh, using an electronic tuning device, and then I would do everything else by ear. It will sound a lot better in my opinion. Okay, so again, we're going to move down to the next one, tune our, um, go ahead and tune your unison. One thing I want to note here too, if you're having trouble with the unison, let it go. Um, get it as close as you can, come back to it at the final check, so you don't want to spend 10-15 minutes trying to get something just right when you can come back to it later. There also may be a little bit of a false beat in it you have to look out for and you may need to deal with later, but just get it where it's sounding pretty good to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the next note down. Let's practice this again. Go a little past it and you hear it speeding up so we know we're past it. Bring it pretty close. Okay, to do your 6-3 check. Okay, so this one's moving a little faster than this one, so we know it's still a little sharp. But let's check our ghost. So again, let's hold these open, go up a fifth, which is B flat now, and go up two octaves. So once you, again, once you get that beatless, that's a perfect 6-3 octave. So you're going to do that all the way down. Again, you could use the Ghost all the way down the piano if you wanted to. I find it a little easier to at least to get my bearings first, to do the 6-3 uh, interval check first. That just lets me know if I'm in the ballpark. And as I get further down, I do more and more of that. Now, the better you get at hearing this partial, the 6-3 partial, the less you'll actually need to hold the notes open and do the Ghost check. You'll be able to hear it. Um, technically, it's there. So if I'm playing this, it's there. If you listen hard for it, you can hear that note while I'm playing these two. It's very faint, but that just comes through ear training and experience and practice with it. Um, you'll get better and better at it 
as you go along. So I'm going to move a little bit further down just to give you a better idea of how useful this is when you get really down low. So I'm going to go all the way down to F1 and F2. So if I want to tune these, okay, let's mute off the, uh, the F2 the unison there. Okay, so if I want to make sure these are perfectly in tune with each other. So again, let's say I'm going to, I'm tuning uh, F1. Okay, we've got all the way down here. Okay, so there's a lot going on there. So I'll show you this 6-3 interval check. It's kind of muddy. I mean, it's there. You can hear it moving a little bit. Uh, it depends on the piano. It depends on the length of the strings and the, just the way it's designed. Uh, that'll determine how well you can hear that. Um, but so to do my ghost check and go up a perfect fifth again, which is going to be C, and we're going to go up two octaves. So now you can really hear that. you can hear that, that's the 6-3 octave showing itself. So now you bring it down to where it doesn't move. Don't listen to the higher pitch one you hear moving. That's a different, that's a different partial. Make sure that one doesn't move and once you're confident, then that octave should sound great. Okay, and the last step you're gonna do is you're going to do your final checks. That's when you're gonna start at the bass, work your way up through the treble, checking every note, uh, check the unisons first, make sure the unisons are really good. Um, after the unisons are good, then go through and do your double octave checks, all your four twos. Um, go up and down the keyboard. If you play a little piano, that's helpful. You should know how it should sound. Um, it's not necessary that you know how to play piano, but it does help. Okay, so final review, uh, you're gonna tune your temperament with the uh, electronic tuning device, whatever program you prefer using. It's going to be the same no matter what piano you tune. So again, I highly recommend you just go ahead and get, get used to just setting that with um, some sort of software. It'll definitely speed up your process unless you're, you're you know, preparing for the RPT exam. That's a whole nother thing, that's a whole nother video. So you're gonna set your temperament and then you're going to to the treble side of the piano again. So we're going to have our um, our major third check. Okay, that's going to be for our four two octaves. And as we go up, same thing. Okay, until you get up to F five. Okay, which is that's you're going to start doing your double octave. Going all the way up. Okay, and then when you get to the bass side of the piano, you're going to switch to your 6 3 checks. So you're going to go to this. Again, your minor third. That'll get you in the ballpark. Okay, and then your ghost check, which again, perfect fifth up, hold your other ones open, and go up two octaves. And pull that partial out of those strings. You can do that going all the way down. Okay, so that's how I tune a piano. Now, again, there are many different techniques out there, but these are the ones that I use, and these are the ones that are best for me. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Questions, comments, snide remarks, leave them below. And as always, stay tuned.